Uh, it happened a week ago. I'm horrifically tired and I can't remember any of the acts. And now I'm going to tell you all about Eurovision 2019 in Israel, Dare to Dream, which I swear was the motto last year as well. I'm going to go through all the acts in order um, and I am probably going to have to look half of them up because my memory's awful. <laughs> I've got a job now. I need my brain for like d spreadsheets. The first act was Malta. Um, and I do remember this one. It was like a woman singing about a chameleon. The staging was kind of fun, like it was quite colourful, the dancers were really into it. I quite liked the song. The chorus was kind of disappointing because it like built up to like the big like chorus and then and then like nothing happened. Right at near the end of the song, they, they built up to the big chorus and they did a big chorus and it was like, why weren't you doing that for the whole song? Um, but yeah, Malta were fine. Like th it was fun. Yeah, it really didn't take me long to find one that I didn't remember at all. Um, the second act was Albania, uh, and I just googled Albania Eurovision 2019, and I definitely remember this woman's outfit, but I have no idea what the song was. The third act was the Czech Republic, and theirs was like an actual song, like it just sounded like a pop song. like. This was like the 1975 or sing this or something. Are they still a band that people care about? I'm really out of date with pop music. It was like a fun, like, pop song. They were all wearing primary colours. The drummer was really pretending to play the drums. And it's one of the few songs that I can kind of, like, remember the chorus of. And it's because it was a catchy one. It was really catchy. It's all about the friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. They all had very white teeth and it was quite distracting. Did you see their teeth? Um, but no, I like this. Yeah, Czech Republic, pretty good. Number four was Germany, and I feel quite bad for Germany because when the public votes came in, they got zero points, which is actually less than the UK got, and we came last, so shout out to Germany for that. The song wasn't, like, bad. I don't think any of the Eurovision songs were, uh, are, like, ever bad songs. They're just not very Eurovision-y or they just look bad compared to other ones. And Germany's was one of them. The staging wasn't particularly interesting. There was the main stage, and then there's like a big V that comes into the crowd and people like stood in the middle of it. And they were both stood on one arm of the V and then they slowly walked to the bit where they join and then they sang in each other's faces. A little bit weird, not the weirdest thing we saw in the night, but um, yeah, they just yelled sisters a lot. Do you like it fine? It's a nice message. Have sisters. That wasn't the message at all. Number five, Russia. Um, Russia were actually doing quite well when the jury votes were coming in. Um, I thought this one was very cheesy. It was quite Eurovision-y for like a ballad kind of song. The staging, the man was kind of stood in a shower and there was like loads of versions of him that he's obviously recorded before. Like those images you see on the internet of like someone dramatically like holding sand on a beach and going as it falls through their fingers or like Troy Bolton in like bet on it like splashing the water like that's that's the vibe I was getting from from Russia's entry I can't actually remember any of the songs I just remember the staging um yeah Russia they they put a man on a screen congrats six Denmark okay this one was just like the cutest thing I've ever seen um, it was really nice. She was just singing about how love is forever or something. I can't remember. But then she climbed up on a big chair and sat on a big chair and her, and then her friends climbed up on the chair and they were all swaying from side to side. It was adorable. And the song was giving me like big Ingrid Michaelson vibes maybe. I don't know if that's the right singer. I, It's kind of a, a genre of music that I'm like adjacent to. Like, I, I have vague knowledge of this. Maybe like Feist or something. It was quite good. It was a fun song. It was really cute. Oh, so, right. San Marino was seventh. Um, San Marino sent a cult leader and all his followers as their group. It was just this creepy man and he was rooted to the spot. Like, all movement has gone from his legs and he was just stood there and, and his legs were unmoving and only the top half of his body and he was just, like, pointing at people. Say na na na. Yeah, it was incredibly creepy. His voice 
was just incredibly off-putting. Like, it was too low. And then he had a bunch of, like... He had a, his dancers were like wearing suits, except it was suit shorts. Really bad look, which I absolutely need to get for when it's warm in the summer at work. Just rocking up to the office. Suit jacket, white shorts. Number eight, North Macedonia. Okay, this was also doing really well with the jury vote, and then the public vote came in, and she got like 93, and it was like really sad. The song was called Proud. I do remember that. I don't remember how it went, but it was kind of another big ballad. Um, she was also stood on the stage in one spot, just like shouting. Big screens behind her were just like showing her back. And I thought like, oh, at some point they're gonna show her front and it's gonna mean something. Symbolism for something, but it didn't happen. I didn't get it, but I don't speak Macedonian. Was the song in? Is that a language? Sweden came after that, um, and they were really good. It was a dude singing, and then all his extended family came on and sang with him. It was really nice. And this one did really well, apart from in the public vote. And they, like, when they were doing the votes, they were really building it up. They were like, Sweden needs 253 points to win. And they just kept saying it for like five minutes. When they finally read the votes out, it was like, Sweden gets. 90 points and the guy looks so heartbroken it was the worst thing i've ever seen like why have they tormented this poor beautiful man the hosts this year were terrible i'd like i say this every year apart from when it was in sweden and the hosts were great but the hosts were just awful particularly the one host whose face was unmoving he had no idea what was going on and he just kept reading things out wrong like how did he get there Oh god, Slovenia came next. I think the less we say about Slovenia the better, but it was disgusting and gross and it was the Eurovision equivalent of that vine where there's the two people in like a coffee shop like just pressing their heads together and someone's going, is that allowed? And it's, and that, that was it. That was their Eurovision one. It was disgusting. What the fuck? Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? Stop. Cyprus came after that, and I actually couldn't remember at all until I just googled it. Uh, I think I was just traumatized by Slovenia for this one. But this this woman had like a very impressive like leather outfit and like sh chandelier underwear. So like shout out to that. I'm sure the song was good. Uh, my mind was somewhere else because Slovenia just absolutely destroyed me. Number 12 was the Netherlands, and they won Eurovision this year. They were the favourites going in, and, and they won. So I was expecting some, like, big, like, flashy, amazing performance. And it was just a dude at a piano. He stared at a light for a bit and, like, sang about how sad he is. Great. Cheers, Netherlands. When I saw the song was called Arcade, I was kind of like hoping for some like upbeat kind of chip tune kind of thing. I thought that would be fun and like the staging, like he could be in an arcade, like playing arcade games. But now nah, he was just like crying. After that was Greece, and I thought Greece were amazing. It was just the embodiment of aesthetic in like fancy cursive writing. Big Florence and the Machine vibes, just like people with swords and people with like big flappy blowy in the wind outfits and a big egg that turned around and a person came out just carrying a ball and then they threw the ball into the audience. I loved it. <laughs> After that was Israel. Israel sang a sad opera singer. I don't know what he said. After that was Norway. I thought Norway were really good. It was a regular song and then a man in a deep voice sang in a different language. <laughs> it was very classic Eurovision. I liked it a lot. Just like a regular song and then you just throw something weird in there. Like, do you remember last year, two years ago, when the Romania did the yodel song? And it was just a regular song and then the chorus was just someone yodeling and then they fired a cannon. That, that was Norway's vibe this year. Uh, 16th 
was the United Kingdom. I've seen some articles online saying that, hey, it's because Europe hates us. We're doing badly in Eurovision because of Brexit. No, it's because we send the exact same act every year and they're sick of it. Why do you keep doing this, United Kingdom? We send a good singer and we, we, just, we just go, get out there, sing a song. Like, we don't put any effort in, and it's just the saddest thing in the world. And I feel really bad for Michael Rice, because he did a really good job. Like, he sang the song really well. And then at the end, he was like, it's always been my dream to perform at Eurovision. And I was like, yeah, Michael, you're friggin' doing it, lad. And then he came last, and it's just really sad. I don't think the problem is in the acts we send, but the songs and the staging because we're just incredibly bland we're just consistently really boring and also it doesn't help when we just have the weirdest act of the year coming immediately after us which was Iceland who just sent some like industrial bondage screamo band they look like they were out of Mad Max you know in Mad Max 2 where it's like Lord Humongous and then like his tiny twink boyfriend who just dies immediately like that was the act after that it was Estonia Estonia Eurovision 2019 alright yeah Estonia were fine it was a handsome man singing a song he had a guitar with him I think this one was really weird because he had a guitar for the start of the song and then they did some like fancy Eurovision graphics and his guitar disappeared and it came back again at the end and that was kind of weird and I was wondering how they do that I can't remember the song <laughs> Belarus Eurovision 2019 oh Belarus sent like a 16 year old and it was um yeah stop sexualizing kids I guess is the message of this one Azerbaijan <laughs> oh wait no I do know this one Azerbaijan um, was the one that had robot arms on the stage and they were like scanning the dude's heart uh, that was some fun staging I don't know what the song was I really needed to do this like immediately after watching Eurovision because I do feel this is this is just a disaster because I can't remember any of them um, I feel like in terms of staging this was quite a strong year but in terms of song less so after that was France, and France were really good. I really like this one. The song was good, the the staging was fun, like the uh, there were big Egyptian vibes going on. Like this was like an Egyptian pharaoh singing it, and he had big shoulder pads, and then like he had a dancer come on, and it was like someone who who'd been in the news because they were like it was like this overweight dancer who who was kind of defying the odds and like living a dream and she came on and she was like spinning about and all sorts and that was really cool and then this like a deaf dancer came on and she was like still dancing really well even though she couldn't hear the music and like that was really cool and there was a nice message behind it and I thought it was going to do really well and then it didn't and I was quite sad about it because I really liked this one I would have liked them to see like more dancers come on because I, I, I always like it when they use the maximum number of dancers. Because you can have six people on stage at a time, I think. So I just want everyone to, to do the maximum, because like, why not? But no, I love this one. France was really good. Looking at the next one as well, I feel like the, the end of Eurovision this year was really strong. And that might be why I got the impression that like it was a really good year. Because um, 22 was Italy. Uh, Italy sent like an actual like good rapper with a good song. Um, I thought it was really good. I mean staging wise it wasn't particularly exciting but like the song was enough to carry it and he had a cool thing where he got everyone clapping and the timing was really weird so it took me like three choruses to get it. You had to wait like a little bit more than you expect. He, he would finish singing and then you go <claps> it was a good one. Serbia I can't remember anything about it. The woman stood still and she had one leg out. That's it. That's Serbia. 24th was Switzerland. I thought Switzerland was really good. It was a really handsome dude. He's got like red backing dancers. It was all very red. They like just kept filling the screen with red and and 
it made it kind of hard to see what was going on but the song was quite good and like the dances was fun i don't want to say filler because i feel like it was kind of above average but it's like it's not like particularly spectacular but it's like it's a good eurovision song to like keep the hype going like i would like if eurovision like lost all the ballads and then just put more of this kind of song in as like filler to get between like the weird ones the penultimate one was australia and it was just incredible um they had a gimmick and they just fully went for it the singer was on top of like a massive pole and the pole was swinging about while she was singing and there were two dancers on poles as well swinging about and like i have no idea <laughs> how she did it she must be like ripped as hell to like be able to like stay on the pole and keep singing as well it was incredibly impressive the song was actually quite good the fact that she could sing so well while like attached to this mad max pole cat swingy pole was amazing i thought australia had it for sure because this was incredible um but apparently not they prefer man with piano 26 was spain spain did really badly in the in the points and i don't know why their song was fine it was like it was pretty fun um the staging was weird so he had like a house at the start and and he was going into different rooms and that's where all the dancers were and then he left the house and then like a big light up robot man turned up like and he had like someone behind it controlling it and it started like tilting the house or something and like what and then the robot disappeared and then all the dancers were like dancing about i don't know i really liked it same bucket as switzerland like it's a fun eurovision song you can't have all people swinging about on poles but then spain did really badly and like they didn't deserve to although i would just say that no one deserved to do really badly apart from slovenia that's it all 26 acts i'm so sorry that i couldn't remember any of them and only talked about what they actually look like rather than the songs themselves i'm gonna put on the screen right now some of my favorites greece denmark were really good czech republic uh, australia staging was incredible and france those are my five favorites yeah that's it um it's been a long time since i last did a video and it's because i'm really busy with my job and i'm tired all the time i mean i'll try and do more but like whatever i'm doing it for fun I'll make a video and I can be bothered. <laughs> like and subscribe and comment your favourite Eurovision act. Um, comment how disgusting Slovenia's was. Gross, 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 gross.